Farming is one of the oldest professions in the country's history, so it may come as a surprise to many just how far we have come from the more traditional practices for planting and harvesting crops. One of the most popular farming trends right now is the rise of vertical farming, which has been adapted by more and more within the community in recent years. Today, we take a look at the vertical farm craze and talk about whether this is really the future of farming or just another trend. Let's get started. First things first, what is vertical farming? farming. Vertical farming is exactly what it sounds like, a farming system in which vertical space is used instead of horizontal. This is valuable for many reasons, but one key one is that it frees up a lot of space for other things, making vertical farming a particularly appealing strategy in areas where fertile land isn't plentiful, or in city environments where that space is much more valuable. What you need to know about vertical farming is this. Farmers are able to produce more food on far less land than when using old farming techniques techniques, making it the superior option, right? Right? Next, a more complex situation than we may think. As we're currently experiencing with the rise of vertical farming across not only the United States, but also across the world, the practice is not quite as easy as older methods. There are reasons for this that we will touch on as we take a closer look, but essentially the stakes are just a lot higher using this method, even when weighing the fact that so much space is being saved by using vertical farming. That's because the amount of variables with this kind of farming increases, all of which can cost you your entire crop if you aren't being careful. Now, high stakes action. The consequences of a mistake with vertical farming are severe, with the impact of losing an entire crop being similar to what happens to a traditional farm after a flood or drought. Because of this, vertical farming should not just be tried by anyone with a tractor and some seeds, but instead left to experts who are able to account for the unique conditions brought on by the alternative farming technique, but this craze wouldn't have become so popular if the risk weren't warranted. And so now that you know just how complicated vertical farming can be, let's break down why it's recently become so popular, and why some believe it to be the future of farming as we know it. Next, let's look at how vertical farming works. Vertical farming is a pretty simple concept, but obviously the details can get pretty complicated, as you're essentially trying to maintain a healthy ecosystem in a way that nature isn't typically associated with. That being in layers and stacks. While there are many models that work from repurposing skyscrapers and warehouses into farms that could sustain entire communities to smaller projects on a more personal level, vertical farming doesn't seem to be going anywhere. The key to the process is by creating a sort of microclimate to allow the plants to grow year round, and then the rest is sort of the same as taking care of crops in an any environment. Up next, why farmers and environmentalists are so excited about vertical farming. The idea of producing as much, if not more, food in a smaller space seems like some sci-fi hogwash, but farmers and scientists have come together to find a way, and that is partially the reason that vertical farming is becoming so much more popular. The various models that have been proven to work time and time again under varying circumstances, and environmentalists have happily reported that vertical farming is able to sustain itself over the long haul, so it makes sense that with very little drawback, those with the opportunity to make those changes would. Vertical farming is a bit like solar energy in that it might be somewhat expensive to set up the panels, or in this case to repurpose these buildings, but over time you're making that money back. So what are the benefits of vertical farming? The farming community has always been a forward-thinking one, and so it makes sense that they have embraced this new method with open arms. It makes it so much easier though, knowing that you're benefiting from its implementation as well. Vertical farming has a few major benefits over the traditional method, and depending Depending on where you live, it could be for very different reasons too. Look at Detroit, for example, who are at the forefront of vertical farming because their city has so many buildings laying around empty after financial hardships hit the area a few years ago. Or Vegas, who benefits from using less water more than it does anything about reutilizing skyscrapers. Next, utilizing less water and space this has been the overall theme of our conversation about vertical farming so far, but that's just because at the end of the Day, that's what it does best. Not only does vertical farming free up space though, but it also uses 98% less water too. A staggering figure that is one of the best selling points for the practice. Using 99% less land and 98% less water makes it a no-brainer for many to at least consider vertical farming as a solution to issues on the farm. And with populations increasingly moving toward urban living situations, with an estimate that 80% of the world will live in urban areas in the next 
next 50 years, that space becomes even more important moving forward. Year-long production. One of the coolest parts of vertical farming is that you are essentially able to create your own ecosystem, which means you don't have to deal with silly things like seasons. With vertical farming, you can actually farm for the entirety of the year, with breaks to that schedule dictated by you and your equipment, not by any natural forces. This means that if you decide to stick to traditional farming, you're leaving months of money on the table, something that won't sit well with anyone. Next, it eliminates variables. Nope, you don't need to rewind the video because I know I said the only issue with vertical farming were the added variables, but these are things that can be handled relatively easily, and with the help of experts in the field may never be a problem again. Natural side effects, however, like disease, will come back again and again. Because of the way that the plants are cared for in a vertical farm, those variables are not a factor, so you can rest easy knowing that your plants will remain healthy and happy. A solution to food deserts. Food deserts are quickly becoming a major issue in the U.S., and the issue doesn't seem to be going anywhere as more and more people venture into cities. Vertical farming is the best way to produce a lot of food without a lot of land, and so naturally it will help with these issues and help to ensure that cities will remain supplied even as they keep ballooning. Vertical farming may not solve every issue surrounding food deserts, like price issues, but it will at least ensure that people will have access to food, which was a problem that was starting to worry farmers. Now, let's look at the world's largest vertical farm. While the biggest farms in the world are not located in the United States, with most being in China to help them deal with their own food shortages, the largest vertical farm recently went operational in New Jersey. A huge step to legitimizing the process across the U.S. and North America at large. The news is great because these large-scale farms will be absolutely necessary as food shortages look to become potentially more common in the world. Estimates claim that a farm of the size of South America would be needed to feed the entire world. So if we're able to rapidly build these vertical farms and take the pressure off of the farms we already have, they could be huge in the long run. I wouldn't be surprised if even bigger vertical farms started cropping up after New Jersey's successful attempt. So is this really the future of farming? All signs point to an emphatic yes. Just judging from the reaction that the first few big vertical farms have been getting recently, it feels like vertical farming was a much needed answer to questions that scientists haven't been able to answer for a long time. So it feels as if vertical farming will become commonplace pretty soon, especially as there are significant incentives for farmers to get on board early. While I doubt that the ways of the traditional farmer are completely gone, when it comes to city areas and big companies, it wouldn't make any sense to eat up more valuable land when alternatives exist. Vertical farming looks like it isn't going anywhere, and the fact that the only downside is that there are some complicated procedures to follow only points even more to how much of a home run idea this was. And that's all for our video today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like as it helps us out a ton. We hope you learned something from vertical farming and why it's so popular in the farming community. Don't forget to subscribe to know when our videos come out. That's all for me, guys. Have a good one.